On this episode of Conversations with Rich Bennett. We can tomatoes every Labor Day weekend. And you something probably make like, pasta from scratch, right? I ha- we have. Or I ha- yeah, we have, but it's not, not something that we do very often. But but the, the sauce we do, when we make enough, last year I think I had 20, 22 cases, which is a case is 25 pounds. But that's nothing compared to my parents in Rosedale when I was mm-hmm. growing up. They would start, my mom would start the Thursday before Labor Day and would go all the way to that Monday, Labor Day canning. We did, Holy back cow. in the day, we did like 40 bushels of tomatoes. Wow. And they, we got, drove them down from Jersey because Jersey tomatoes are the best. Really? And yeah. I don't know why, but they are. And, um, <laughs> uh-oh, uh-oh, talking to the farmer here now. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. <laughs> sorry, I'll let sorry. You have your moment. <laughs> <laughs> Roma tomatoes, the Roma tomatoes. I'm okay. sorry. Coming to you from the Freedom Federal Credit Union Studios, Harford County Living presents Conversations with Rich Bennett. Come on, you're faster than with me. Guys. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, you already yeah. said it. I was going to ask her if she remembered the day. I am sitting here today. I am joined by my lovely co-host, Jennifer Hathaway. Hello. The, uh, the one that actually, she we did a photo shoot, and she made me look good. Oh, my God. God, that's you can a, work miracles. That's impressive. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> so this gentleman that we have on today, I met him. We did a thing for Harford Family House called Ahoy Cocktails by the Bay, and the theme was Greece. Um, why they asked me to be a part of it, I don't know. Uh, I mean, a, a bald-headed greaser just didn't make sense you to me. You were good, <laughs> man. You were good. Hey, so I met this gentleman, and we just – it's like we – like we were – like brothers reunited or something. Absolutely. I mean, we just yeah. hit it hit it off right away. And awesome guy, does a lot in the community here. And more than likely, even those of you that are listening in other countries, you may have heard of him. Uh, my friends over there in Italy, you probably heard of him too. I have Elio Scaccio on, who is also a founding member of the Society of Italian American Businessmen and also known as the Gentleman. One of the Sicilian tenors. Am I missing anything? <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, I think that's about father. it. Father. <laughs> yeah, um, father. Yeah, that's for sure. It, it just all around nice guy, man. So thank for, you. Thank first you, of all, welcome, man. I'm glad we can do Thanks, this. Man. Yeah, yeah. Even Definitely though he cool. did yell at me, he's like, Rich, where's the drinks? You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> just to get the party started early. That's right. That's right. Um, so, yeah, pleasure to be here. Absolutely. So we, I, I had to laugh because Chrissy Breslin and I did the 4th of July parade. Right. And it. Yeah, that was and amazing. he sends me a message. He's, he said, dude, we're going to stop in front of the – because Syab was in it, the flute. So right. we're going to stop in front of I'm going to sing uh, – was it Coming to America? Living in America. Living in America. James Brown. James I did Brown. my Jeff best James Brown impersonation. Yeah, oh, he did. And they stopped the flute right in front of us. They were awesome. And then all of a sudden I hear somebody in the back, they're not supposed to be stopping. It's like – which I think they need to do that. They need Don't they moment. do that at Macy's? They do. I think so. If you're supposed to stop in front of the reviewing stand. And he's, well, he didn't serenade me. He serenaded Christy. <laughs> well, we were serenading the whole crew, actually, you know. But <laughs> You guys but it was were the, awesome, man. Thanks. thanks. But my he, voice was shot the next day after singing Living in America eight times in a oh row. My gosh. That That whole strip. Why did, I was going to say, why did you also, like, change up to do, like, the Neil Diamond one and everything? Well, because they, they usually when you're in a parade, the, you do the same song throughout oh, really? the whole thing. Yeah, so that everybody hears that feature song throughout huh. the whole parade. That's what they usually do. So I I've done sing, stuff I in the main. I never sang in, in the, a parade. Oh, wow. <laughs> Next year. Huh? You're not, are you, I thought that's what No, they already in. asked me that they, for suggestions for next year. They said, well, what about getting down there and. Singing some patriotic songs in the crowd. I said, "Yeah, and, and, and you, know, he, you don't want me to sing. <laughs> you don't want me to sing. I mean, people will I'll leave." I'll the boombox behind you. There guys. you go. You can just lip sync. I can, I can even slip. mess that up. <laughs> yeah. Somehow. I mean, I, I, yeah. I don't think you're giving yourself enough credit. I will That's milly true. vanilly the, I think the you're thing. I like a good trainer. You, you're, this is a good connection. I know. I could. I could hook you, you up with some voice lessons. I'm sure we'd be. We'd be good. You can aligned. sing God Bless the USA. I did that several years ago, like eight times also, and that's just... I, I can't do that. 
It's because even hearing that song, there's a couple songs that even when I hear it, I just start tearing up. God bless the USA is one of them. Yeah, it's a good the one. The Marine Corps hymn's another one, and uh, Amazing Grace. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, I just, all of those are great. Yeah, I just start. Yeah, so trying to sing it. Yeah, uh, have everybody yeah. crying. It's tough. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you guys are awesome, man. Thank you. Thank it, you. It, we have, it, a, but we have cool. a great time. Yeah, we have a great time. So it's well. First of all, before we get into Siab and all that, tell us a little bit about yourself. Who you are? Oh, jeez. Uh, where to start? Um, well, <laughs> <laughs> my uh, my, uh, my parents came over from Sicily, Agrigento, San Giovanni Gemini, um, and. With one, with one of their sons, my oldest brother, who's who's passed, but um, sorry to hear that. So they came over and landed through through Ellis Island, landed in Jersey City, had another two. Your parents did. My parents did. Oh yep. wow! Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm first generation Sicilian American, Italian right. American. Um, but um, yeah, went they they landed in Jersey City, had two more sons, um, and then moved to East Brunswick. Had my sister and then me, and then we moved to Rosedale, uh, Baltimore. Okay. Here in 72, 71, 72. So you went to school down here? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I always say I was born in Jersey, raised in Baltimore kind of thing. So that's uh, kind of where, where where I came from. And, and um, yeah, I mean, I have three beautiful daughters, and I'm part of uh, – started – been involved with a lot of Italian American organizations around the country as I've moved right. when I was younger, but um, but then in you know started uh, started SIAB, the Society of Italian American Businessmen, in March of 2013. I was at a uh, at a Hartford County. I had just separated and um, wound up coming up here for work and got um, got involved with Palumbo Insurance. So mm-hmm. I was working with Palumbo Insurance. And then um, I was at a Hartford Chamber event, luncheon or something, and saw right. him and was, you know, friends with Mark Dardozzi. And I asked him if there were any Italian organizations up in Hartford County. And he had said, other than uh, the Sons of Italy, at that time there were Sons of Italy, now they're Order Sons and Daughters of Italy. Um, oh, they're still around? Oh, yeah, they just changed their name. It was, okay. it was Sons, it was the Order Sons of Italy. Right. And now it's Order Sons and Daughters of Italy. Interesting. So, so apart from them, he said, nah, there's really nothing, nothing up here. I said, well, why don't we start one? And he was like, oh, that's a lot of work. I was like, so what? Let's so do let's it. Let's give it a shot. Yeah. See what happens. What's the worst that can happen? So we got together over, uh, over some coffee and, um, and there and there it went. We got the founding board together, and then it started growing and growing and growing. And now we're at sixty-five members. Really? Yep. And over the last ten years, we've given away over seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars to area charities and scholarships. And we're awesome, out there man. digging in with our hands. We've done stuff with Habitat for Humanity. Mm-hmm. Um, we're we're not afraid to go out there and get dirty. We've done build a bed for you know. Oh, uh, sleep in heavenly peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sleep in yeah, heavenly peace. God, that was a shame to see that. Ch- the chapter here closed. Yeah, God, because yes. they were great. We did that. I actually cooked food for them. Really? Yeah, they oh, wow. had a big build, and I we had our lions and leaders there, and I said, well, we'll also grill food for you because we love to grill. Yeah, yeah. And we did. I f- forget how many hot dogs and hamburgers we went through, but yeah, and uh, a, a buddy of mine also is there. He'll go the night before to help him cut everything. Right. And all. Uh, which I'm surprised he's not in Syab. I need to yell at him. You should. You I, should. I will. Dan John. Nothing like being listen. called out on the podcast. That's right. Oh, That's I, right. I, I, I'm called Dan John. I'm calling you out. How come you're not in a you know, member of Syab yet? Yeah. What's the matter with you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys, all right, because you have the Italian the Italian festival that you guys do, which correct me if I'm wrong, that's the largest in Maryland or the United States. No, it's not in the, not in the United States yeah. now yet. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, the, the the Maryland Italian festival, it's, it's going to be, it's the largest in Maryland, the mm. largest Italian festival in Maryland. And I, I just recently, we recently did a, a, a I guess a, release or an article Press release, in right. Hartford. No, well, this was an article in Hartford Heart, I think. Okay. Should be out soon, but um, where you know, one of the first lines that I put in there is said that the, the Maryland Italian Festival is over 40 years in the making. Because 
the idea of this came from Rash Field back oh in the God. 70s. And that's when all the big entertainers were there. Right. And they had the, the whole carnival aspect. And there hasn't, been a, there hasn't been a festival like this one since Rash Field. That's, really? That's what, that's, what we're, that's what we're pushing for. And that's been a vision of mine since, since the beginning. So I, I, wanted, I wanted to bring back Rash Field and bring back the... Because the, the, so many people grew up in that time. Yeah. And they brought in so many great entertainers from mm-hmm. Al Martino to Dean Martin to, I mean, you name it. Uh, they, they brought in all the greats. Wow. And um, ever, when it went away, that was it. Then, then there's a lot of little uh, Italian festivals came popping up. But they were more, they're smaller, which right. they're great because they've kept the, the heritage alive. Yeah. But they're, they've, they've all been on a smaller scale. And I wanted through, through SIAB, I wanted to bring back a, a, a festival that. And that's, that's a whole weekend, right? Yeah, that's Friday, right? Saturday, Sunday, September 29th, 30th, and October 1st. Nice. And we have enough, we have enough muscle now where we can, <laughs> we can, we can put on a festival. And it does take this. a lot of people to put yeah. something, because it's at, what, the equestrian, the equestrian, bleh, I can never pronounce Easy it. for you to say. It's yeah. the equestrian center. Yeah. Right, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, the horse place in Bel Air, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is yeah. a huge, huge, well, I don't want to say venue. It's grounds. Yeah. Right. And you guys got a lot going on there. You had bocce ball tournament, right? Yeah, we have a bocce tournament that's going to be happening on Saturday, which is September 30th. Mm-hmm. That's going to be 30 teams. Um, 30 teams? Well, yeah, you know, because of our involvement in the in the community, right. and what SIAB's done over the last 10 years, Hartford County government is a thousand percent behind us good so much so that they're actually building us for uh for semi-permanent uh bocce courts nice there. so we're having it's like legit bocce courts okay so we're able to bring in teams from jersey from new, new jersey from new delaware from new york um so uh, so there's going to be 30 teams the the bocce tournament is specifically set up to uh, to to raise money for the Special Olympics. Right. So that was that, and that, and we did that last year also. But we, but this year it's encompassed in the the Italian festival. So Saturday there's going to be thirty teams. The it's going to be a hundred dollars per person, four man teams. Huh. Bocce, 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 bocce. You can't say bocce because bocce is kiss in Italian. Bocce. Oh. But it's. That's B A C I, bocce. Damn, I didn't know that. Yeah, Ew, and bocce is B O C C. Yeah, that one is. <laughs> kiss, the, a, kiss the balls. Kiss the ball. <laughs> hey, whoa! It's a family it show, man. Come on. The chef kiss. Yes, it does. <laughs> God, all right, thirty minutes. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So, so yeah, on uh, September Saturday, there's going to be thirty teams from all over. Um, it's a hundred dollars a man mm-hmm. or woman or child, whoever's you know. I think. You really probably eighteen and up or sixteen right. and up are going to be in the, but um, <clears throat> but so it's a hundred dollars a person four four man teams, um, and out of that four hundred dollars one hundred dollars automatically goes to the Special Olympics, nice. right right off the bat. Good. So um, <clears throat> so then we're you know the it'll be round robin style and it'll be a single elimination or double elimination rather. Okay. Um, and by the end of the day, there'll be a first, second, third, and fourth place winner. Um, I believe the um, the prizes are going to be twenty five hundred dollars for first place, two thousand for second, nice. fifteen hundred for practice. third, and then fourth place will get three hundred dollars, which pretty much gives them their entrance fee back. But the hundred dollars still goes to. What's the length of a court? Was it ninety feet? Technically, it's 90 by 13, but we're okay. not making them that long because okay. they're semi-permanent. If we were making permanent ones, we would. Yeah, they, you make them all different yeah. sizes. Even the ones down in Little Italy, which are gorgeous. Yeah. Um, they're not. I think they're like 70 by 12. Okay. Something. I've always wanted to learn how to do that. It's 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 I mean, it it's looks, a lot of fun. Yeah, it it's looks easy. like a lot of fun. It's easy to play. It's really hard to get good at. Like cornhole. What? You never what? Is, cornhole is, it hard? is hard to get good at. 
Is this for me? <laughs> you throw the thing through a hole. How difficult is that? Hey, well, if you do it, if you're it's using regulation right. boards and you're set up the right, it's hard to get a six Did you pack notice? The, did did everyone notice the awkward silence there when he said <laughs> like cornhole? Is it? Yeah, yeah. Hey, look, I'm old. Okay, it's hard for me. That's <laughs> never. I don't even want to say that because these guys in Little Italy would probably be like, son. Look, grown men up. should not play with bean bags. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> I, oh I'm just saying. <laughs> That comes from a Sicilian, so take that with what you want. Take that. Oh, God. No offense to the cornhole players out there, because they're great cornhole players. No doubt. Oh. And now, isn't there a day where, you, where people that are in the Special Olympics are going to be playing as yes, well? Yes. So Saturday is, is open to the public tournament okay sunday is going to be the special olympics regional tournament multi-state regional tournament oh so that's where all the the <clears throat> the uh special olympics athletes will come right. to the to the festival um we hope they come early we hope they come on mm-hmm. saturday and bring their families from out of town and there's because we have lots of hotel discounts from right. from our hotel sponsors and stuff but enjoy the festival on saturday enjoy the carnival and you know all that kind of stuff but then sunday they get together and um they they have the the regional tournament and they they last year when we did the this we just did the bocce tournament Mm -hmm. last year at the equestrian center right and it was um it was amazing to see these athletes and putting their just having the best time ever right and um just out there having a great time I and to me that made the whole that is that is more important to see than than raising money yeah. for me doing being a part of that is is more more uh satisfying and more i get more more gratitude out of out of seeing that than raising yeah. money. my actually my cousin helped uh who was the young the young lady at kennedy that started that the special olympics and, and my cousin was, oh, wow. was big in helping her with that and we um because I had a cousin with Down syndrome, and we were always big in helping with the special Olympics. Sure. Loved being huggers, which I don't even know if they have anymore. You I'm know. not sure. Yeah. But I just – and to watch these athletes, oh, my God. And they really – they have fun. They, they have they're fun competitive and they're good. And they're good. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of fun. Very good. So, all right, what's the times that the festival actually starts each day? So Friday is the kickoff, right? Um, which I would expect to be a lot of attendees because mm-hmm. it's the very first time ever that we're putting this on. So um, that starts at five o'clock. It's from five to eleven, okay. um, and we're gonna we're looking to get some some uh, county and state dignitaries here to kick off the the event. Okay, um, and then Saturday is going to be from eleven to eleven, eleven a.m. to eleven p.m. And then Sunday is 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. 11 a.m. Okay. We're going to do a mass on oh, stage. Oh, really? So yeah. Nice. So we're going to okay. so so that yeah, that cool. brings out a lot of people and and it's a way to you know show your faith and right you know. All right, so it. something very important. Th- those of you that are coming to this um, Friday, eh, you can eat lunch. Don't eat dinner. No. Saturday, no. don't eat nothing. Sunday, don't eat nothing because if you come to this thing. Which now my favorite part to talk about food, <laughs> as is evident by here, your smoke show barbecue food. shirt. Yeah, baby. Yes. <laughs> here for the food. There you go. So, uh, what kind Start of food? training now? Uh-huh. Start training now. Training yeah. what? You cooking wise? Uh, eating wise. Oh, eating wise. Oh, eating wise. Yeah, I don't need to train to eat. Believe me. <laughs> Believe me, I thought you were going to say cook it. I, I was going to say there ain't no way I'm going to go there. Cook. I had Italians yell at me because of. The way I make my spaghetti. Oh boy. Oh God. What? Do I even want to know? I, I'm doing it in the instant cover pot. Your ears. What? <laughs> What's an instant pot? It's <laughs> a pressure cooker. Zero. What? Yeah. Why? Why is it? Because it cooks quicker. <laughs> pasta cooks quicker. You can't wait that eight minutes for the pasta to cook. Yeah, it does. It, it does it in, in eight minutes. But with the meat and everything, it does. Folks, don't <laughs> pressure cook your pasta. Be a Look, I'm Irish, episode. okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure you're going to say you use jarred sauce, too. No. How do no, you make no, your sauce? No, 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 no. No, I use um, 
crushed tomatoes. Okay, all right. Yeah. You've redeemed yourself a little bit. <laughs> and dear me. Oh, what? Oh, God. I shouldn't have said. I, well, my wife doesn't listen to this. My wife and daughter don't know I use dear me. Oh, they well, do they do now. now. They, but they don't listen, so I'll save. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because otherwise they wouldn't eat it. What's wrong with putting deer meat in spaghetti? Nothing if you like deer meat, I guess. Deer meat's good. Yeah, venison's good. So, venison. no, all right, so those of you listen, know I am not going to be cooking at the festival. No. So don't worry no, about no, that. No. Now, if it's barbecue, that'd be a different story. Right, yeah. right. Oh, no, my best friend lives in Italy, and his wife is a Sicilian. And when they came over here, when he, she educated me. Now, this was years ago, mm-hmm. and I made... Or no, she made the spaghetti, and I took a ton of sauce and put it on. She goes, what are you doing? I said, what do you mean? She goes, you just coat the pasta. That's it. Just a light coating. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, what a freaking difference. But, yeah, she, uh, she goes, you don't put all that on there. That's too much. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, then okay. I'm definitely I'm going to have to change my ways. Oh, once you try that? I'm I'm saucy. Because I talked to him not too long ago, and I told him about the instant, but I could hear hear her in the background. I can't. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, my family cans. We we um we can tomatoes every Labor Day weekend. And you probably make pasta from scratch, right? I have. We have. Or I have. Yeah, we have. But it's not not something that we do very often. But. But the the sauce we do when we make enough. Last year I think I had twenty twenty two cases, which is a case is twenty five pounds. But that's nothing compared to my parents in Rosedale when I was mm-hmm. growing up. They would start. My mom would start the Thursday before Labor Day, and would go all the way to that Monday Labor Day canning. We did Holy back cow. in the day. We did like forty bushels of tomatoes. Wow. And they we got, drove them down from Jersey because Jersey tomatoes are the best. Really? And yeah, I don't know why, but they are. And um, <laughs> oh, uh-oh, talking to the farmer here now. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. <laughs> sorry, I'll let sorry. You have your moment. <laughs> Roma tomatoes, the Roma tomatoes. I'm okay. sorry. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so they did forty bushels, and and you know when I thought about that after after my parents passed away, and I kept the tradition going. Mm-hmm. Forty bushels is is two thousand pounds of potatoes or tomatoes wow now i do you know me and my family get together and we we split them up for the year and we get about 21 22 cases and that's 500 pounds that's nothing compared to what they used to used to do nothing holy so it's crazy but yeah so back to the festival sorry sorry i digress but i digress um because you guys are going to have pasta there, of course. Yes, what, absolutely. It, uh, tell us all about the food and everything that's going to be all there. All right. Well, I can tell you the 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 uh, Syab is going to have. We're going to have our own our own tent, food tent. Right. And there we are going to have sausage and peppers featured, of course, um, and pasta and meatballs. Mm. So those are the two Syab dishes that you're going to be able to get um, through through us. But there's going to be a lot of other. Vendors there, Di Pasquale's uh, is going to mm. be, da- you know, the one down in Bolton yeah. Hill or Canton. Uh, mm-hmm. mar- the Di Pasquale's Marketplace is going to have uh, food there. Um, Libertori's is going to have food there. Tutto Fresco. Uh, the list goes on and on as far as as far as who's having food. But, yeah, um, you know, we have Di Pasquale's Espresso, who's going to be there as well. We have desserts. We have gelat- uh, gelati from D.C., Someone's coming in from D.C. Oh, to wow. do their gourmet gelato. So, um, and we have restaurants, uh, uh, Restaurante Atilio, who's coming in from Delaware. Fusco's, wow. Fusco's uh, Lemon Ice, Fusco's Italian Ice oh. is coming in from Delaware. So we have, this is, the, and it shows you how big this festival is yeah. already because Pulling people from when, you, when, you, when, you, when I've gone to, and I've gone to tons of Italian festivals across mm-hmm. the country, but even the ones locally, they're they're pulling just from local. Right. We're pulling from multi-state because we're the Maryland Italian Festival. So, so we're looking at at um, at bringing people in um, from all from all over. So, so yeah, we have a, a lot a lot of a, a lot of lists of you know food that we're gonna get spezzato, the 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 pulled pork. Oh. Um, uh, 
burrata caprese, which is the mozzarella caprese. So we're oh, going to yeah, have yeah, meatball yeah. subs. We're going to, I mean, and then we're going to have stuff for the kids too. You know, uh, there's going to be a vendor there that's going to do like boardwalk fries and chicken nuggets and chicken. fried I ravioli for the kids. Yeah, yeah, fried <laughs> ravioli, mozzarella sticks for the kids and stuff like that. But, but there's going to be a lot of authentic Italian food there yeah. that um, we haven't really. We're working, and that's another different thing with with us is that uh, that I'm getting all the food vendors together shortly within the next right. couple of weeks. And we're going to have a big, uh, a big virtual meeting where we're going to decide on the menu together for the, for the attendees. Oh, we okay. want it to be so that, that every, so that all the vendors have their specialty, right. but there's not going to be, you know, Duplicates. five vendors that are selling chicken parmigiana or right. what, you know, so okay. it's going to be, everybody's going to work together in a family kind of environment. I like that. And it, the vendors are going to help one another pick food that's going to work you know work with them so so that's kind of a little different in that that i want the the vendors to be more of a family environment that is actually awesome because i don't know of any other festivals where they have the vendors work together like that right that's great not that i'm aware of yeah so you know i i think i'm sure i'm sure they all they all work together in some aspect but i I want them to work together in more of a family aspect where it's like we, because the whole experience for this Italian festival is supposed to be, a, a, it's a destination experience for mm-hmm. the attendees, whatever nationality you are, it doesn't matter. Right. We want you to be a part of the family for the weekend, a part of the heritage for the weekend, and enjoy what Italians enjoy mm-hmm. on a regular basis. Because this is how we grew up. You know, this is this is what it's all about. We're gonna need this mapped out so that I can create rich and I's like food itinerary. So when we show up. <laughs> We know exactly. We're going to have an order of what we're going to hit. I'll time oh, it all yeah. out for us. <laughs> I'll give us a walking break. Yeah. If you go, if you go to... Um, cannolis. The, oh, cannolis are going to be there for sure. I remember I just spoke to I just spoke to a lovely lady yesterday from Nonni's, Nonni's Cookies. Nonni's Cookies. She um, is going to be there, and she just recently started after her... Uh, her story was recently started after her grandma passed away. And she didn't think she would ever get into baking, but she got into baking like six months ago and has gone full tilt into it. Now she has her own line of pizzelle, all all different kinds of uh, pignoli cookies and and wedding cookies and all these different things. So she's going to be be there as well, well, which is really cool. Let her know. know that that the that the are the kids right inside the door. <laughs> I don't think so. Okay, let her know that. The cookie expert himself will be there. I'm, I'm going to assume that's Santa you. Santa Claus? Yes. Oh, Santa Claus will be there. Okay. Yeah, so she needs to take care of him. Santa Claus right. loves Spoyadels. Oh, Spoyadels is going to be there as well. As well. Yeah, they'll oh. be there. As Santa, well as Zeppoli. you got to love Zeppoli if you love Spoyadels. How what? Zeppoli. It's another fried dough kind of pastry. Oh, okay. And that's uh, Tracy's Zeppelin from New York. They're coming in from New York to do that and a few other, few other things uh, mm. as well. So there's going to be a lot of food, a lot of desserts, a lot of drinks, a lot of cool Year stuff. Year round, though, where can you find Spoyadels around here? Because there used to be mm. a place um, in Hartford Mall they've closed, unfortunately. But I don't know. I don't know. Mm. Even um, I don't think the Vaccaros even even carries. You had so back. I mean, this was years ago. You could call ahead and like you could order them, and I don't, then you would go home and like pop them in the toaster oven, and oh, so good. But yeah, I'm not I haven't sure. Seen them around here? No, that's a that's a delicacy that you don't you don't find very often. Maybe though, this festival will start to bring back. You know, I hope some so. Of those that's that things. that's that's the plan. I, I've uh, you know a lot of the things that we're doing is uh, I've have traveled a lot as i've mentioned to right. a lot of different through with the sicilian tenors mm-hmm. and with my doing solo performances as well but going and i've taken um all the best things and that i've seen at other italian events and i'm trying combined. to bring them all combined into this event are so, there going to be any like cooking demonstrations Yes. Oh, there are. There oh, are. Thank Actually, God. we have. So I'll go into that. So we just have, don't yes. do, wait, do me a favor though, because I want to see these cooking demonstrations. 
Don't tell anybody from, although I already told them, never mind about me cooking spaghetti in the Instant Pot. Yeah, yeah, Never yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. We were going to, we were. Sign we, him up first. I, I was actually going to have you as a celebrity chef, but as soon as you told me that, I <laughs> shot that right out the window. <laughs> you just blew it. Sometimes you can talk too much. You know, have you ever heard that? You know, Santa Claus specializes in cookies. <laughs> Yes. Uh, so, all right, so cooking demonstrations without Instant Pot. Without Instant Pot. <laughs> so we have, um, yeah, there's, uh, with thanks to one of our sponsors, Galbani Cheese. Mm-hmm. Um, they are sponsoring the Galbani Cheese La Cucina cooking stage. So that's going to be going on all three days um, in between the entertainment. Okay. So the entertainment will perform during the half hour of where there's no entertainment on the stage. There's going to be... The Galbani cooking stage is going to be doing either cooking demonstrations with celebrity chefs or wine wine demos. Also, oh. wine tasting, wine demos. So it's going to alternate. And um, <laughs> Jennifer's uh, eyes lit up there, there, Jennifer. She's like, wine. I like wine. Wine dessert. It's all good. <laughs> celebrity chefs. Can you name any yet? Um. Yeah, I mean, we could, well Zach from the local. Oh yeah, okay. he's gonna. Um, Mich- uh, Manja with Michelle, who's from Jersey. Okay. Uh, she's got a cookbook out, and I think she might have a podcast out as well. Um, and I believe uh, the De Pasquale's chef oh, is okay. going to be there. Um, and there's go- there's going to be a few of them. Tutto Fresco okay. chef is going to be there, and we're we're I. I think we have about six. Okay. And they're gonna they're gonna alternate and kind of uh, kind of go through all three days. All three days. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, nice. so so that's um that's so kind of something that cool that we you decide to go, you'll get to see somebody that actually knows how to cook. We'll have a big sign there that doesn't that says, you know, no Instapot. Learn how to cook without the Instapot. Learn how to cook without the Instapot. That that's that's got a ring to I'm it. not gonna live this one down, am I? No. Not but, anytime soon, I mean, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> God, I feel like we could turn this into like one of those infomercials where you've got the guy, cough, cough, rich, <laughs> like trying to figure out how to cook with the Instapot and he's like struggling and then all of a sudden these professionals Hey, let me tell you something. Chili's it. Ch- doing it chili in it? I mean, because you guys do chili in a slow cooker, right? No? Well. Okay, never mind. You do. <laughs> oh, I have. We have. Okay. We have. We, uh, or we an Instapot's have. also a slow cooker. All right, I'm just going to shut up. No, continue. Nope, really, nope, I'm, nope, I'm enjoying this. I'm not with pasta, but I'm not. I'm not one to give cooking advice. But I uh, so anybody going to this thing definitely should not eat before they go. They leave. They're probably going to leave at least ten pounds heavier easily. Well, I mean, there's going to be healthy stuff there too, so you don't have to like go all crazy with. With the, but you oh, probably will. But you probably you will. Walk it off, I mean, you, you know. time it out. Here's yeah, my and you can off. dance it off. Yeah. Here's my take. When it comes to food, if if there's something there that you've never tried, try that yes. first. Amen to that. Agree. That is true. You don't know if you're going to like it right. unless you try it. That's true. It's something that you don't get every day. Yeah. Or have access to every day. That's true. So, and I'm sorry. I was looking for. I'm looking for the the the. Um, Hey, you'll be lucky if you get a signal here. Task list. Uh, that might be what that might be what part of it the problem is. Because <laughs> I was gonna see like some of the some of the, the the people that we oh I have some here. Uh, it might not be. Yeah, I can give you a, a rundown of some of the food that we have. We have we do have a couple like of um looking at like the answers to the test. I know. <laughs> <Let's see. laughs> We do have a cu- <laughs> we do have a couple of um, a couple of, of uh, wood fire pizza. Oh really? Yeah. So there's going to be Renzi's wood fire pizza and Nino's fresh dough pizza. Oh, is going to be there. Um, Nino's uh, Maria Amadeo down there at Nino's has been a godsend because mm. her and Rob Di Pasquale from Di Pasquale's Espresso has been really helping with um, finding sponsors for food. We got the Checo pasta. Um, which you cannot slow cook, but um, you, or fast cook even. You just have to cook it regular. Put salt in after you put the pasta in, not before. 
I'm ten, not gonna lose this down. After right. you cook the but pasta, do you put olive oil in it to like keep it from sticking? No, like, you're not supposed to do that. Well, you can, I mean, you can if you want to. Uh, like what I'm we gonna... put is just a little bit of sauce. Mix the sauce okay. in, and then put it back on the the burner that you have, so it, that it stays warm. I'm gonna have a roundup of all of these things that TikTok tells you to do, and then you're, <laughs> we're gonna play a game of like truth or false. Like, well, you can. I mean, you can put you can put olive oil in there if you're not. I, I never do, because then you the, it, that coats the pasta, and the sauce doesn't stick to the pasta. Oh, I didn't think about that. You know what I mean? Right. So, okay. but you can do that if you're like doing basil pesto sauce okay. or aglio olio which is which is olive oil and garlic you know um so there's a lot of different Jesus. different stuff you can God. do there it's gonna be good it's gonna be is good. that your stomach we hear <laughs> not growling. yet my not yet is it will be no i made sure i said to myself self you so? better eat something before you record this podcast today because <laughs> you're gonna be talking about food and every time, it never fails. If I don't eat something, my stomach gets louder than all of us talking. <laughs> now, when it comes to entertainment. Yes. Before we get to the Sicilian tenors, who else is going to be performing there? We are oh, going to have. Is, was. <laughs> there was. Was that your stomach yeah, just that now? Yeah, that was. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's chiming in. Um, there's going to be some national entertainment. Um and regional entertainment and local mm -hmm. as well. So the national entertainment that's coming in uh, Friday, we have, uh, and they're going to be here all week, Ray Massa's Eurorhythms, or all weekend rather. Okay. Uh, they're coming in from Columbus, Ohio, nine-piece band. Nice. Fantastic. They do everything from like classic Italian to Italian pop to Italian rock to even uh, American stuff, some American right. stuff as well. So, um, and so they're going to be here Friday. Um, I have a wonderful soprano coming in from, from Cleveland, uh, Julie Golenko. She's going to be coming in and doing a show on Saturday and Sunday, like an hour. But, and she does things from Broadway to, you know, classical type stuff. Right. Um, fantastic vocalist. Um, that is your stomach. Good Holy moly. Lord, man, and I ate. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then Saturday, Saturday we have, um, so Ray Massa's Eurorhythms are headlining on Friday night. Okay. Um, Saturday night, we have, uh, from Las Vegas, we have the Atlantic City Boys. They are a this Frankie Valley, yeah, yeah, Frankie Valley like tribute. Jersey Boys, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're like, <clears throat> they're actually, they're a touring group, so they mm -hmm. have, there's like four of them, that four groups of the Atlantic City Boys really? that, that tour around. They're like the Blue Man Group. Okay. So what, the best, hands down, Frankie Valley tribute Band right. in the in the country, so um, so they're going to be there uh, headlining on Saturday night. You know we have local favorites. Uh, the Minaldi brothers mm -hmm. are going to be there. Um, they're going to be there on. I'm still finalizing the entertainment schedule, but I think they're going to be there on Sunday. But after re something really cool that's happening that I have not seen ever at an Italian festival is after the jur the uh, Atlantic City Boys ends, which will end at right around between 9 and 9.30. Mm -hmm. um, we have an Italian DJ coming in, Victor T. Um, he's coming in, and he's going to be d turning the Italian festival into an, uh, an Italian discotheque. Does he do his own, have his own podcast? Victor Tosti? Yeah. No, he's a, he's, he's a DJ that's been around for a okay. long time. DJ's in Ocean City, DJ's in a lot of places. But okay, he is, okay. he's okay. actually taking, and he's doing all... Italian d disco music, nice. not not d disc dance music, Italian right. dance music. Italian. So you're going to be transported so f to Italy now. What they're playing now and what oh, they played cool. in the '80s and '90s, and so it's going to be really cool. So he's going to that that DJ section is going to happen at night, and we're doing that really for a lot of the the. There's, uh, I've been in communication with a lot of younger mm -hmm. Italian Americans, and they they always say you know. We wish that there was some younger music Nothing there. Nothing around here for them. Right, yeah. right. So, so I said, okay. So I got with Viva, uh, Viva Together, the organization, mm -hmm. and um, David Marcosi and uh, Gianni Andracchio uh, are the the founders of that organization, and and got them to uh, they're sponsoring us, and really it's going to be um, 
we put that in there for the for the younger generation for the you know the second and third generation right. Italian Americans um, but really to to kind of let people know that you know Italian music isn't just the Italian music of yesterday, right, although right. that's some of the best stuff and most you know beautiful well, music that's Italian out there. Some of these Italian rock bands out there right now. Kids it's ass. crazy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Maniskin. Oh uh, yes, know, yes. One of my favorite rock Italian uh-huh. groups out there. Um, but yeah, so so it's just like there's there's Italian pop out there that's phenomenal, Zucchero and uh, Italian, yeah, and and the the Italian dance music. So you know mm-hmm. we wanted to bring to 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 have an experience for. Young and old. I mm-hmm. mean, you know, the Italian festival is is somewhere where you're going to see grandparents hanging out with their children, hanging out with their children. I love where that. Where you see three yeah. three generations of people, right? Maybe even four, depending on how how, how things go. Um, but yeah, where where you'll see them, and there'll be something for each one of them between the carnival rides for the kids, yeah. the music for the older music for. For some of the some of the grandparents and and parents and and then you know we're infusing it with some of the Italian pop and and dance stuff later on Saturday, so that's all going on on Saturday um, and then Sunday, um, headlining we have the Sicilian tenors. Let's take a little break here. I want to tell you about Maryland Pro Wash. Their passion is in making your items look like new. Their expertise is in pressure washing, from driveways, houses decks, fences, and awnings, to apartment complexes, townhomes, strip malls, and storefronts. They want to clean it up for you from top to bottom. Contact them today to get a free quote. Either go to MarylandProWash.com, again, MarylandProWash.com, or call them at 443-752- one seven five four. Again, that's four four three seven five two one seven five four. Maryland Pro Wash from top to bottom. They're going to clean your home. And when I met Elio and we were talking, he and I think you mentioned that you were part of the Sicilian Tenors. I was mm-hmm. like, get the hell out of here, dude! I never realized that they were from here. Well, you. Well, are. I am. You are right. I don't know if you ever heard of them. I've heard of them. I was like, because they're free. I just love listening to music like that. And I was like, holy shit, no shit, man. I was like, I had no idea. Which yeah. then, of course, you tried to con me into singing. I'm like, no. Yeah, so, so you guys are closing it out. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So we're um, we just got back from um, from London in March. We went to London to do uh, our second PBS special. Oh so, really? Yeah. So and it's it's a tribute to Downton Abbey. If you've heard oh of Downton my Abbey God, on my PBS, <laughs> so it's um, uh, it's not really a tribute, but we went over there and it's a journey to Highclere Castle. Highclere okay. Castle is where it was filmed. So oh, really, yeah. So we all of our videos are in the castle and uh, outside of the castle, and we filmed. We we have music videos, and there it's a period piece really because okay. all the music that we picked is from the twenties and thirties because that's when Downton Abbey was. So did you guys so, actually perform in the castle? Mm-hmm. Well, we, we sang wow. our, to our videos in the castle, yes. How is that, the acoustics for that? M- amazing. I mean, whatever you see on TV in Downton Abbey is nothing compared to what right. you see in person. It's crazy. Wow. It's it's literally crazy. Nothing Gotta like be. singing in the shower, Reg. Yeah, that's well, true. No, it's, it's, I mean, because some of these places, as musicians, they're floored. Because one of my favorites was always, don't laugh at me about this, Yanni at Live at Acropolis. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. my God. One of the best concerts. Amazing. And just the the sound. Yeah. You know, you hear a lot of these rock bands talk about, what is it, Red Rocks? Red Rocks is another one, yeah. yeah, yeah. About the sound. And it, it just, it's neat. Some different venues. Wow. The sound that you get. And yeah. a lot of them, you don't even need as much equipment because yeah. of the acoustics. Who did, who did, um, who's the, who did all, all, all of me? The, the artist. Oh, um, John Legend. Yes. John Legend. Yeah. He, d- he, when we were there, uh, Lady Carnarvon, who's the owner of the castle, mm-hmm. who's in our show, we did a lot of interviews with her. Oh, nice. Um, he was just there 
last year, I think, and he filmed one of his videos in the same place that we were filming wow. one of our videos. So it was kind of, it was really cool. What an experience. Um, oh, yeah, it was, very, it was very neat. So anyway, we're, but that's coming out um, in September. Um, so we're going to be uh, closing out the festival on Sunday and, and doing a little bit of that, doing okay. a little bit of our, when we opened up for Joan Rivers before she passed away, mm -hmm. um, she dubbed us the Three Tenors Meets the Rat Pack. So because yeah. we do slapstick comedy on stage too, and we joke around, and we're up there singing some big, some big numbers with our, you know, with some big voices, but at the same time we're kind of making fun of ourselves and joking around yeah. and, and having fun. So turning the lights yeah. out to make you look better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> if you if, when the, you gotta watch the PBS special, the first one. Oh, I'm did. I'm definitely gonna watch it's, that. It's actually I don't know if it's on demand though. I don't know if it's on demand. Um, but PBS is still airing it around the country. Yeah. I don't know where yeah. and when, but it, it's still oh, on. Oh, they uh, – awesome. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Oh, you, got, you nice. guys are great. Thank so you. how did – actually, let's talk about that because it's you, Adam, right? Nope, not yep. even close. Aaron. Aaron Caruso. <laughs> yes, Caruso. All right, and Sam Vitale. Sam Vitale, yep. Okay, so how did you guys meet? We met um, – I met Aaron – Wait, oh God, would you stop? Not you. My stomach <laughs> is going crazy, China. man. It's all the talk about food. Yeah. Um, so I met Aaron back, jeez, uh, I don't know, um, in 2006 or 2007, something like that. Okay. And um, right as I was getting into singing classical, because um, I, I grew up in the 90s, you know, stage diving to Pearl Jam and Nirvana, mm -hmm. and that's what I was singing back in the day, but... But then it, when my, my dad passed away in 97, I decided to start singing classically. So so that, um, so that I met him at, a, at an Italian-American event uh, that we were putting on. And then um, we hit it off. And then shortly thereafter, he invited me to Carnegie Hall to perform with him. And he invited Sam Vitale also. Oh, wow. So we went to Carnegie Hall, performed in, at Carnegie Hall. I was nervous as, as anything. Well, yeah, it's Carnegie Hall. Dude. Car yeah, Carnegie Hall. <laughs> first time, si first time singing without a microphone ever in my life, because again, I'm I come up from from rock and pop right. and and um, and yeah, singing at Carnegie Hall without a without a mic. So we we d each did solos, and then uh, at the end we came up uh, together and we did uh, two songs, O Solo Mio and Funiculi Funicula, and that was back in 2010. When when um, the three tenors mm -hmm. were still really really big and popular, right? Um, so people went nuts. So um, so we went back into the dressing rooms and we were like, well, that, something we might we have, have something, something here. here. <laughs> yeah. So so it was cool. So we went went ahead and and um, and the Sicilian tenors were born at Carnegie Hall and we've been performing ever since. So and, and well, God, you get to go to the castle to perform. Yeah, yeah. Um, you perform been performing all over the world basically haven't you yeah we did, i mean we've done we did a did a cruise ship to the bahamas we've done uh yeah, places that had in to new be york and shaky it was shaky <laughs> wow no dad jokes allowed oh, in this podcast. The <laughs> well that was your first time performing on a cruise ship right it was how it was. hard is that it was it was hard because it was actually it was rocky yeah the the, the ship was uh was rocking so we uh yeah, it was Literally. interesting. It was it was right. No pun intended. No pun. Right, right. Oh, when he told pun me about. I was cracking up. I was like, "What is going on?" But it was it was cool, cool though. Um, yeah. So we had a good time. But yes, yeah, so there's I mean, there's a lot of uh, a lot of entertainment that it's that that's the entertainment is what's going to keep everybody at the festival because I've right. gone to so many festivals where you walk through it, you have something to eat, and you catch a little bit and then you're just out because mm -hmm. for whatever reason it's just not enough but we want to this is an experience we want people to go bring their lawn chairs set themselves up with their with their blanket and their lawn chairs up on the lawn plan it for the day um and you know so between ray mass's euro rhythms uh julie golenko and uh victor t the sicilian tenors um the Atlantic City Boys, the Minaldi Brothers. You're not going to have Minaldi Larry to do stand-up? Larry is, Larry's actually, I, I, I'm glad you mentioned that. Larry <laughs> Noto is going to, is gonna. Uh, I'm finalizing with him. Yeah, I think he might come up with uh, with his big band and, really? and do a set. Awesome. Um, and by set, I mean like maybe a song. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, 
Just kidding, Larry. I kid. I kid. I joke. <laughs> God. So, um, so yeah, I think he, he's going to be uh, in the in the mix as well. So, it's just, the entertainment's just going to be. Oh, and I got another one: um, Louis Louis Venardi uh, and Joanne Robertozzi from New York. Louis, you'll remember him or you'll recognize him. Uh, he played one of the kids in the Bronx Tale. Okay. So, um, so he's in the Bronx Tale. He's but he's still a, a famous actor. He does. Right. He's in God the uh, the Godfather Harlem, the Harlem of Godfather, Har- uh, Godfather, God, Godfather of Harlem. Of Harlem. Yeah. Um, he's do he's just in a lot of different a lot of different uh, different events now and different movies Sorry. and shows. Um, he's going to be there on Friday and Saturday uh, with Joanne. So okay. Um, so they they sing together. Um, they're great. They're going to be doing a lot of cool stuff. And um, and there's opportunity to if you if you're a fan of the Bronx Tale and Godfather of Harlem and and some of the other the other he was in uh, um, the Irishman as well. I haven't seen that yet. Oh, it's fantastic. But he's been in a lot of movies. So if you uh, come out on Friday or Saturday, get get some uh, get some pictures and autographs with him. And, and uh, so it's probably too late for this year. Uh, but next year, do you think you might have? Two guys that do like a Martin and Lewis thing. We might. Who knows? <laughs> we might. I don't know. Stay That's tuned uh, for that. Maybe yeah, you'll, yeah. you all know what we're talking about later on. In yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's Jennifer's like what? I know. So it's it's there. Yeah, it's a lot of cool stuff. A lot of cool stuff. But, and you're still doing solo stuff as well, right? Yeah, actually, I'm going up to um, Buffalo in um, next weekend and headlining the Buffalo Festival. Um, oh, nice! Yeah, Buffalo Italian Festival. So, so that's that's cool. Um, yeah, just a lot of neat stuff. You know, at the festival, you're able to get, and, and again, why why the entertainment is so important because um, we're selling VIP villas, mm-hmm. which is basically a it's a ten by ten tent um, that uh, that you get a table of eight, so you get eight VIP tickets. You get your your tent that you can get for Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, or all three days. So it's three hundred dollars for Friday, six hundred dollars for Saturday, five hundred dollars for Sunday, or a thousand dollars for all three days. And it's your tent. That's a deal. Yeah. Well, and not only do you get we, and it's great because you know when you're expecting twenty thousand people throughout the weekend, right. it's going to be packed. Yeah. So that's a home base for yeah. people. Um, you not only get the table and you get the chairs <clears throat> that flank the stage, but you also get um, uh, wait, a wait staff. That, oh, okay. So yeah, so you have a waiter or waitress. You get a server there that's oh, going nice. to serve you drinks. Oh, my gosh. If you have kids especially, that's so nice. Yeah. So they'll, so you can, you can sit down. They can go off on their own because it's all enclosed. Right. And there's going to be plenty of security there. So they can go off on their own. You can be there watching the, watching the music. They can come back. Your server will get you drinks throughout the day, and and um, and, wow. and it's very cool. Really thought of it yeah, all. that way too. You're not you're not missing any part of the acts. Right, and well. again, taking the best of the it's best like a dinner from theater. all right. right. Taking the best ideas from all across the country, from all the different yeah. different Italian festivals, and putting them in the one one yeah. festival. And this is the second year. First year. This is the first. This is the first yeah, so year. Last, last year, year we just, just had like the, the bocce tournament. And what I love oh, about that. Okay. So you know, normally when you're getting excited about something, or there's like a grand opening, they have the the ribbon cutting. Right. But instead, instead of doing the ribbon cutting, they did where all of, you know, their group and the county executives they all rolled the bocce balls as like okay. the, the big announcement. Right. It was very cool. I yeah. loved that. Yeah, that was that was definitely cool. So we did that last year more as a shovel. Uh, uh, as a shovel in the ground moment. Right. Okay. So we wanted to, um, to pro so we've been promoting this for like a year. Right. Um, I don't know how many people have been paying attention to it until like really right now. And just recently, getting close to it. Right. But, right. Um, I feel like it's like been like on like in the back of people's mind, but now that it's getting closer. Yep. Yeah. So we have, we have, and I'm, ju- I'm just looking up a couple of things on the, on, on our website. Um, but, um, Lost my train of thought. You guys really yeah, thought of everything. I thought of a lot of you stuff. Yeah, really, yeah. And what I, the other thing that I love is that you see this a lot recently is getting 
is organizations that have been around for a long time are having a hard time getting the younger generation to step mm-hmm. up and like keep those traditions going like things like the parades and yeah, yeah. all of these things that these groups have been handling for years and years and the younger generation really doesn't get all of the work that it takes the logistics yeah. behind it to oh, get God. it like you know the praise don't just happen or these festivals don't just happen but you guys have really thought about everything and you know, taking the time to see what the younger generation is into and making sure that that's incorporated, that's that's a huge deal. That will get people excited and get people, you know, you, keeping those traditions going. I could see this within 10 years being the largest Italian festival in the country. Easily. It could Agreed. be. Easily. It could be. Yep. Uh, I mean, to the point to where I think you'll outgrow where you're at. Well, there, there. Well, that is a lot of grounds. There is a lot of grounds, <laughs> and they are they are planning a, a pretty massive expansion. Oh, really? Um, from what I understand. Oh, I so, didn't know that. Okay. I don't know if I was supposed to say that, but you know, um, uh, yeah, I think I think so. So the, those grounds are going to be uh, expanded. Good. Um, and and this is you know first year out. Um, there's going to be some hiccups. There's oh, going to be it? some yeah. some. There's definitely going to be a learning curve here right. uh, for us. I, I've hired Via Productions down in Florida, a great friend of mine, uh, Jerry Soma, who is uh, consulting and really helping us with a lot of the details that I, I would have never even thought about. Which is smart on your end because a lot of people do not do that. No, and if we tried to do that on our own, w- it, it would have been a disaster. But with his help, we really have a good firm yeah. uh, firm hold on what what we're doing what is needed, um, what pitfalls to look out for. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, between him and the, the, the other big thing is our sponsors. I right. mean, without our sponsors, we would not have a successful festival because it, you're talking about, Jennifer, the, the, the time that right. uh, when, uh, you know, a couple of us that are, that are uh, me chairing the festival and, a, and there's a handful of other uh, SIAB members that have been, working since last October right? all behind the scenes to get it to where, yeah, so where we work. are now. And we haven't even gotten to the festival yet. And that's right. like the, that's the second part of all this. It's real. It's like another full-time job. Yeah. Wait a minute, I'm oh, sorry. I mean, it really is. I'm sorry. So you mean you guys started planning this after last year's was over? We started it before last before, year's. Yeah. Wait a minute. You last mean, year's Boston sp- tournament was the announcement okay. that we were bringing this. You they spent were bringing this a County. year, over a year working on this? More like 18 months. That, no. By nobody, the time it's all said and done. Nobody does that. <laughs> I'm being sarcastic. I, like, I know no, you are. I've always that. said that. Right. This is, has always been a pet peeve of mine, oh, especially when you see these annual things. Start working on it. The, the next day that it's over, actually, yes. and don't, nobody even start working on it then. Work on it beforehand. Because as you're going along, you're taking notes uh-huh. of all these people you meet. So even though you're working on this year's, Absolutely. everything you're doing this year's yeah. going into next year, too, right. already. Yep. I was well, going to say the same thing. Like, your work doesn't end after the festival's over. No. Like, yeah, you can do a big, like, yeah, we, we, did, we did it. It, it was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then you guys are going back to the table and going through every detail. What can we make better? What did people really love? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and that's something that um, not only the the time piece of it, but because it's the first one, and go back going back to the sponsors, there's – there, there have been some, some sponsors that have not come on board that we have asked to be presenting sponsors. or right. And presenting sponsors, is a, that's a big sponsor. That's a $50,000 sponsorship. But you are now the naming. It becomes the company mm-hmm. Maryland Italian Festival. Right. It's like, you know, so it, it, that's a big deal. Yeah. Because no matter when I say the Maryland Italian Festival, it has to have the company's name in front of it, mm-hmm. which is, you know, huge. Yeah. Um, but there's been some some spon- some larger sponsors that we've gone after this year, um, and w- whether it be timing or they're just want to see what really happens. Exactly. Right. So after this year is definitely without a doubt, I've learned that that the first year is is the hardest with anything. I mean, like the visionary the visionary part of me is like, okay, this is what we want to do. We want to get this yeah. right. You're this really done bringing and, it to life. Right, bringing it to life, and and that's. All this back-end stuff is now getting laid out to where next year all that back-end stuff doesn't have to happen Mm -hmm. quite as – it's not going to be as difficult because 
it's a, the groundwork's already there. Yeah. So as far as that's concerned, that, that becomes easier the second, third, fourth year. But, yeah, for, for sponsors and for – we've already looked at – you guys at, are still accepting sponsors, right? Oh, God, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and I, I was yeah, just looking at – where companies can go if they want to get involved. We, um, you can go to our website, which is MarylandItalianFestival.com. That's easy to remember. It's MarylandItalianFestival.com. Yes, all, st- all spelled out. No um, Winston Pot in there. No Instapot, <laughs> no no broken pasta in half, none of that stuff. It's all just it's straight up. So, um, I mean, we've got what? Uh, I break my pasta in half. <laughs> I didn't start Ladies and gentlemen, like this podcast is now ended because I'm sitting with someone at the table, Jennifer, that oh, no. <laughs> breaks their pasta in half. I, I do have it now. For the kids. Oh, it's awful. I this is just... It's like to. the whole new noodle woman. Now, I will... My, Your podcast has hit a new low, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> right now. <laughs> the county's going to be in just... It's disarray. The <laughs> whole disarray. thing is in disarray. We're trying to show her how, like, you use the fork and the spoon and you twirl it on the spoon. Well, that's like, a big thing, too. It depends on what part of Italy you come from. If you have a whole long pasta, but you bring it in half, you can't yeah. do that. You can't do that, for one. And it depends on wh- where, you know, there's there's two schools of thought, just like is it gravy or is it sauce. There is do you use the spoon or do you use the side of your dish. I've always grown up and I was taught that you use your spoon. But there's a lot of Italians, even over in Italy now, they, they, it, they don't, yeah, like, they don't use the spoon. side of the dish. But I, uh, it's difficult for me to do that. But it's all, I digress again. So, um, oh, thank you for taking the heat off of me, Jennifer. Jennifer's still in, in shock I'm, with the breaking yeah. of pasta. I have a lot of notes to go through over the weekend. <laughs> yes. so I'm glad that this is on a Friday morning. I know sometimes <laughs> to really, to really, um, you probably use learn. a full size pot, don't you? It's like a medium size. Well, sometimes a full size pot depends on. How much I'm cooking. So well, if you're using a full size pot, why do you break the? <laughs> well, if I, I I usually only break it if we if we're just using like the smaller pot just so that it fits and then I and have then less that, to cut up for the kids. Then that begs the question: Why would you use a smaller pot and have to break it rather than use the bigger pot? Okay, and not... do you really want to know my answer? Because <laughs> sometimes I have one big pot. This is like the most random answer, and we have chickens. So sometimes that big pot is filled with stuff that has to go. We like take anything that's not chicken, basically, and safe for chickens to eat, and we take it out to the coop. And so you so. cook your pasta in the same pot. That, that you feed your chickens in. <laughs> well, we don't feed them. We just, I just dump it. And then I walk it back dump inside it. and wash it. Yeah. It's okay. totally off topic. But trust me, okay. I'm learning a lot about how I'm living <laughs> I'm wrong right kidding. now. And I have a lot nah, to Nah, it's all good. It's I all good. We're just joking to, around. We're just joking around. Have to look over. <laughs> reevaluate my life. Oh, I tell you. God. So, so back to the sponsors. <laughs> MarylandItalianFestival.com. Yes. So the, okay. the sponsors, I mean, we're accepting uh, 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 accepting sponsors, all uh, and it says right on there, become a sponsor. Right. Um, we have, we still lo- are looking for a, a, a presenting sponsor this year. If um, mm-hmm. if someone wants to come in and and do that, would be amazing. And and that actually lo- can lock you in for a couple years, um, so that you get that presenting spot for several years, which is big also. Import- oh God, yeah. Yeah, because as this gets bigger, people are going to be wanting that that spot yeah, so I'm sure prices will go up <clears throat> sponsorship uh prices will go up too more yeah man, maybe yeah yeah well, well probably as bigger, probably as we get bigger we're gonna money but that's true to, that's yeah. true because so, oh, so it locks you in on the price too or it, just it locks you in on the price the option to be the presenting sponsor well, it would lock it's negotiable gotcha. basically okay. but we can lock you like we can say you know if there's a presenting sponsor on mm-hmm. on your podcast it's like i would love to do that let me do that call you know you contact me through the 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 website and if you say i want to lock in for three years right. well to do that it would be one hundred and fifty thousand dollars would actually be the three years but if you we could negotiate that and say well you know what could you do for 130 or whatever right. you know we can we can kind of figure that out um, okay. as it goes but it's fifty thousand dollars for the presenting and we have them from fifty thousand dollars down to five hundred dollars mm-hmm. which is a friends of sia sponsorship and we need loads of those you know and um so but our our big sponsors you know of course SIAB is putting it on right um uh wbal tv 
WBIO Radio, that. and awesome. of course 98 Rock. They're all part okay. of the WBIO right. family. Hilton Garden Inn. Uh, they're they're one of our uh, one of our hotel sponsors. Okay. Um, all Red Security, which is fantastic. You know, it's not sometimes it's not necessarily the monetary yeah. sponsorship. It's All Red is is they're great. handling. I, I know um, some of the guys. From yeah, them. Drew, they're, he's fantastic. Yes. Yeah. So so it's not necessarily the monetary sponsorship. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's they're doing the security for the event. Well, which is important. He donated back or sponsored back a huge portion of of his fee to become right. part of the the and and now he's a, a major sponsor of the event same with bobby's potties bobby's potties was going to cost bobby's a awesome lot of mo- too, a lot yeah. of money for us to have the 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 potties there yeah. and he's sponsoring back now he's a he's a major sponsor um so it's not necessarily the 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 monetary it's also what what we can get in return from some of our some of our vendors um chris construction um mm-hmm. university of maryland upper chesapeake um, health Medi- systems, yeah. medical, here we yeah. Go, here we profiles, go. of course. Yes. <laughs> profiles, which you guys, again, do, you uh, we're, we're you're you've been working media wise for us for over a year, but you you sponsored back half of your your media back yeah, we're to very us in, in that. To be so a part of this. huge. Um, complete document solution, CDS out mm-hmm. in Frederick. So it's not only. Hartford County based. It's right. also you know all over. So for so complete document solutions, Xerox out in Frederick, Tito's Vodka, uh, Galbani Cheese, Visit Hartford. Mm-hmm. They're um, Matt, Matt yep, and uh, the they 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 jumped on um, Merritt Properties, De Serona, mm-hmm. uh, Liqueur. Um, so there's there's a lot of and sponsors are coming. They're they're just some of the the larger sponsors right there. But um, they're coming. We need a lot more. Yeah. You know. Um, we're about halfway where we need to be sponsorship-wise. Um, because we're a nonprofit, all the money that we bring in, it goes back to mm-hmm. um, our, our, um, our foundation <laughs> to continue mm-hmm. SIAB in perpetuity and make sure that we can continue to give back to, the, to, the, to Maryland charities in the future. Right. Right. Um, but all the money goes back to, goes back to charities. So our sponsors are key because we want, we want to make sure that, that – our production costs are covered yeah. by our sponsors. If we do that, I should say when we do that, when we do that, we know that, that everything that comes in from as from soon as we open those doors um, is going to be sent back to Maryland Charities right. scholarships in one way, shape, or form. Awesome. Um, so that protects us from the weather also. Ah. Yeah. You know, so that way if something does happen – um, I've already put my order in with the big guy, so he knows for like a week, at least 10 days Keep prior nice to the festival, dry. all the way through the festival, it's going to be nice and dry, I know, I've already talked to him, he's all set. So, but in the event that something does happen, you know, having, that, having your production costs paid for yeah. before you start will, will ensure, and, and again, I go back to taking the best ideas from all the festivals, that's killed festivals in the past. Right. Where where uh, yeah. they haven't raised enough money, they haven't done enough up front to make sure that if bad weather happens on a day, that it, it doesn't kill them. Yeah. You know, so... Um, yeah, because so that that's, can definitely... Yeah. But we won't have to worry about that. Nope. Nah. No, nah. we won't have to worry about nope. that. Nope, not so, at all. But so, there's plenty of parking. I mean, you know, oh, we're, yeah, like is. I said, we're looking at 20,000 plus people. Um, we're I'm gonna sure have, there's probably going to be a shuttle run in too, right? <laughs> Just like at the farm fair, is that going to be? Yeah, yeah there's going to be. Uh, we got a lot of on site parking. We got three satellite parking lots right. coming in from different areas. Right, okay. So they're going to be overflow parking. We'll have VIP parking area where for the VIP guests, um, where you're, you're purchasing the VIP yeah. villas and, and our major sponsors and stuff like that. But you can actually purchase VIP parking as well. Um, so until it gets filled up. So MarylandItalianFestival.com. Yep. But something else very important was the other two websites. The Siab.org. The Siab.org. People can make donations there. People can make donations to the, the Society of and Italian American Businessmen. Yep, and become a member. We're we're like I said, we're at around sixty five members now. Um, with the advent of the Maryland Italian Festival, I mean I, I would imagine that there's going to be a huge influx of 
of people wanting to be members. Right. Um, because we're not only, you know, we put these types of events on. We, we play hard, but we work even harder. Yeah. You know, so we have a lot of fun doing what we do. And um, it's just something that, that I think it, we – We've attraction. We've uh, done attraction by being out there. Oh, not and by, you guys are out there. Yeah, yeah. you guys are out there. A so plus not, on the grassroots. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, so not 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 because we're out there, you know, soliciting members. We're attracting members. Right. right. So we're growth by attraction, not by promotion. And what's the other website for the Sicilian Tenors? Oh, oh, oh! Of course, <laughs> SicilianTenors.com. Sicilian tennis. Look at that being like what? Rich? I wasn't the, sure. I was you know, I'm the, not sure. You're talking about the, the break your spaghetti in half website? Oh, <laughs> it's like, pressure cook your pasta dot com. Be on the do not enter. <laughs> yeah, list. I can see it now. Both of our faces on the back of spaghetti packages. We're gonna have to go in disguise. Yeah, do not I know, do right? not sell to these people. <laughs> God. So, Ellie, you have anything to add, brother? We got the carnival. Uh, aspect of the the oh, yeah. which yeah, is super important the that because um are gonna get families excited yeah, yeah the camp. carnival there's gonna be 16 carnival rides wow um from the the thrill rides for the the teenagers down to the kitty rides okay for, for the for the young kids and now is there gonna be like a so does your your ticket includes the rides or is that a recipe no separate? that's separate okay that's separate all right so that's gonna be um majestic midways is taking care of our carnival okay. rides They've been a part of um, the festival up in Wilmington, the Wilmington Italian Festival, okay. since 1976 wow. or something like that. So they've been around forever. I trust them. They're great. They're family-owned, uh, second generation now, um, and, and they're just really safe, really they, – they play everything by the book. So it's, it's really cool. Nice. So, um, so you got the big carnival aspect. Of course, you know you got the local, regional, and, and national entertainment. Um, we have the cooking demonstrations. Uh, we have tons of food. Um, and what I didn't really hit on is uh, we have a lot of retail vendors also. Oh. So, um, so we have companies like uh, Lobello Imports, which is, um, brings uh, imported ceramics in from, uh, from the Venice region, Venezia region. Okay. Um, and we, have, we actually have a couple of uh, vendors there that are doing dog treats. So, you know, because Italians love their dogs. Yeah. So, yeah, you know. Um, Italy in color. There's going to be uh, there, uh, someone that does uh, Italian photography, goes over to Italy and does. I have Ooh. some of his work in my, my house, which is say, gorgeous, yeah, gorgeous stuff. Um, sons, and, sons and daughters of Italy are going to be there. They're doing a lot of the souvenir stuff. Okay. Um, we, so we have jewelry. We have soldier solutions. Di Pasquale's Market is going to be there also doing doing um, a, a retail section with all, you know, you can get the cheese graters and you can get different, different so types of things. you think they'll have pots there so Jennifer has one yeah. that she can use just for her Large spaghetti. enough pot? <laughs> maybe. Uh, maybe. I mean, uh, 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 we, we should, we're going to raise a little extra money so Jennifer can buy one more pot yes. for the pasta. So I'm trying to live a minimal lifestyle right now. This is, this is my just goal for 20 well, kids will do that for you. <laughs> kids will do that to you. But um, but a lot of really cool stuff. I mean, um, Rock the Spectrum is going to be there, which mm. is a, a, a bus that's for autistic children. Yeah. Um, and they're going to be there providing the bus and and um, selling some of their their uh, autistic type. Uh, like fidgety. Fidgety yeah. type. Yeah, yeah fidgety type stuff. Awesome. Um, just a lot of a lot of great a lot of great stuff um, on on the retail side. Yeah. Then we have Heritage Row. Also, Heritage Row is going to be where we have um, a handful of Italian American organizations um, and and non Italian organizations. I think the Hibernian Society is going to okay. have a, a, a tent there. But we have and again taken all the best from from because we're the maryland italian festival mm -hmm. we're not just local so i pulled from i, I uh the italian consulate of philadelphia is going to have a tent there because that's our nearest italian consulate so if you have questions about getting dual citizenship or that kind of thing they'll okay. be there to help that's with that yeah it used to be one in baltimore that, but yeah. there's one in dc there's one in, in philadelphia okay. but philadelphia is the the, the, the main the main one for here um uh, there's going to be um, 
the Order Sons and Daughters of Italy are going to have a tent there, but not just their local chapter, their Grand Lodge. Okay. And their Grand Lodge never has tents. At really? Places. So, so they're, they're going to be there. There's uh, a, a, an, an international organization called Filitalia that's going to be, uh, be there. NIAF, we're going to finalize with NIAF, but I think the National Italian American Foundation, the largest one in the country, mm-hmm. um, is going to be there. Um, so, and Applauso uh, Learning Center. So if you want to learn Italian and you want to do that kind of thing, Nicolino Applauso is going to be there. And, and so the, the Heritage Row is growing. Uh, we're, we're going to probably have some, some local, local ones as I well. I like that. Uh, and all that is free. To the, to their tents are free. Right. Um, of course, the food vendors and the non-food vendors, the retail vendors, they, they have to pay to come in. But the, retail, the Heritage Row, it's our way of giving back to the to, – because we're raising money for – for SIAB to give back to the community, right. but we don't want to stop other, not only Italian American organizations, but um, other organizations to be in front of other people yeah, and expand right. their Chance reach to, as well. You know, um, see them in person, connect with them. Yeah, ACIM too, um, which is a women's group, mm-hmm. uh, the Association uh, Cultural Italian. Shoot, I forget what it stands for, but ACIM is uh, is going to have a, a tent there as well. So, um, so it should be pretty cool. And we're going to have we're going to have uh, a couple of games there as well. The wheels, gaming wheels. Right. We're going to have raffles. Um, so it's. Uh, I forgot about that back there. Yeah. Well, when you did that, it made me look at the wheel. I said, "Oh, that's right. We're going to have wheels there and stuff too." So I mean, there's it, it, when I say bring your bring your chair. Plop BYOC. it down because you're gonna need a break. You're gonna need you're gonna need time to just relax. Yeah. Eat your food. Go to the VIP tents. Check out the Butchy tournaments. Um, Friday is open play. Uh, we are gonna have four courts there. So um, so if you come on Friday and want to learn, we'll probably have some people there to help teach you. A Thank bit you. I, cause I like the part where you know to learn. Yeah, yeah. Because there's people like me that need to learn and. Apparently, Jennifer and I both need to learn how to make spaghetti. Yeah, we properly. have a lot to talk yeah, about. That's, uh, that's, that's right. We can talk to, about that yeah. afterwards. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> really, no stone left unturned. You guys have thought of it all. I yeah. think so. And I it's mean, amazing that yeah. you, you're like spouting off all of these names and things. That, it's, it's amazing. Really yeah. excited. Well, it's when you're doing it for 18 months yes. leading up to it, you <laughs> kind of get all this stuff riveted in your head. But, but yeah, there's some, um, you know, Security is not going to be an issue. I know a lot of people are, are worried about security nowadays. We Security is not going to be an issue now. Um, we have the best of the best there we, between uh, Hartford County. Uh, the traffic stuff is going to be taken care right. of. There's going nice. to be um, there's going to be a lot of a lot of cool stuff happening. Tell everybody the dates again. The dates are Friday through Sunday, September 29th, September 30th, and October 1st. Um, we are celebrating the Maryland Italian Festival. We're also celebrating the Society of Italian American Businessmen's 10-year anniversary. Harford County, uh, they're celebrating 250 years. And we're also kicking off uh, Italian American Heritage Month, which starts October 1st. And that's Italian American Heritage Month throughout the country. It's good timing. So, again, one of the reasons why we wanted it to be on that weekend so that we have we're always that we are always the festival in the country that's going to kick off right Italian American Heritage like Month in the country. I yeah. love I like it. That. Yeah, you have really so, thought of it all. I hope so. Yeah, I think so. I think we got a good uh, we got a good thing good thing going. Now we just need to get through this year, and we need tons of people to show up, have fun. Yeah, bear with they us. They are bear with us. There's going to I'm sure there's going to be some hiccups. Uh, we just ask for some patience along the way because we're we're going to learn this year uh, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be a big success as long as you don't get me up on stage to sing. Well, um, you know, we might or to put on, you know, we might need an MC here or there, so yeah. just be, be, be prepared. You that, plug that, the that, co- that's different. That, you can plug the podcast as well. You don't want me to do a cooking demonstration. No, so. we're all out of. We're all out yeah. of spots for that, unfortunately. <laughs> follow them on social media. Follow along. See what's the, I love following your social media. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, yeah. Stay, the other thing, Facebook. Yeah, stay up to date. And as they post updates, um, that way you know as the events approaching, you kind of got an idea of what you can expect. Yep. 
We're going to go on to Facebook, uh, look for the Maryland Italian Festival on Facebook, on Instagram. Yeah. Follow us on um, Facebook and Instagram and through our website, sign up for our newsletter. We're probably going to be offering a couple of BOGO sales on the tickets. Tickets are only $10 for each day. Really? That's um, it? That's it. $10 wow. per that's day. Or you can get a, a weekend pass for $23. Okay. Don't ask covers... why it's 23 Because it's 2023. Oh, yeah. Good one. Okay. <laughs> Never even thought of that, but that's a, good, that's a good one. It might be $22. I don't even know. I think it's $23. But but there you have it. So, tw- so, uh, and, so you and get I'll a have all pass. the links in the show notes. Too. Yeah, cool. Cool, so. cool. And, uh, and, yeah, I mean, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So um, am I. We're excited. Yeah. So yeah, am I. it's going to be neat. I can't thank you enough for having me on. Oh, man, my pleasure. And the door's open. I'd like you to come back on after it's over. Just If I'm I'm still alive, yeah, that'd be great. (laughs) (laughs) Before you go on tour again. Yes. Because, yeah, Yeah, I I know. He's going to need a cruise. I know, I know. No, thanks a lot, bro. Thank you, Rich. I appreciate it. And, Jennifer, thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. Please check out the show notes for all the relevant links for my guests. All you have to do is go to conversationswithrichbennett.com and you'll see the show notes in this episode. And if you can, please leave a review for the podcast as well. Meanwhile, check out the trailer for this podcast that I highly recommend. This is the Italian American podcast, the first podcast dedicated to helping Italian Americans learn about their heritage. We will be talking to experts, authors, and everyday Italian Americans on all things Italian from traditions, culture, food, genealogy, travel, and more. I'm your host, Anthony Fasano, and I have with me my co-host, Dolores Alfieri. And today's episode will be an introductory episode to let you kind of know what you can expect from this podcast. Dolores, how you doing? I'm doing very well today, Anthony. How are you? Doing great. Excited to get this podcast kicked off and just dive into the world of everything Italian-American. Oh my gosh, so am I. This is going to be so much fun. I mean, we've already had so much fun just preparing for it and the excitement around it between us and between people that have already heard about it is palpable. So it's going to be a great adventure. Absolutely. And that's exactly what it's going to be is an adventure. And we hope as a listener, you're going to come on the journey with us. Right. And we are going to try to uncover everything Italian American and get you involved in the show. We have different ways to do that. Mm-hmm. And this episode specifically, what we're going to do, it's going to be a shorter than usual episode. We just kind of wanted to give you an intro from both of our perspectives on what this show, you know, what we intend for it to be for you and how we ho- hope to be able to help you through the show. And typically the way our shows are going to lay out is we have a little beginning intro segment, which we're in right now. We'll go to a main segment in a moment, which typically will be a guest interview. We've got some amazing guests lined up. Yep, we sure do. We've already published the second episode by the time you're listening to this, which is with Mary Tedesco, who's the PBS host of the show Genealogy Roadshow, and she's an Italian genealogist. She's, she's amazing. She was an amazing guest, and you'll you'll love that episode. But then after the main segment, we're going to have a segment of the show at the end of each show called the Italian American Story Segment. We're going to feature clips of conversations, whether it's myself, Dolores, with some of our relatives about their Italian American history, their experiences emigrating over. And we also are going to tell you at the end of this episode how you can also submit your stories and we can uh, play them on the show as well. So, again, we're trying to get you involved. It's all about Italian-Americans and we want to hear your stories and your traditions. So as we segment into the main segment here, I want to just end this segment off with a quote from Martin Scorsese, which goes as follows. I know that I come from mid 20th century America urban, specifically downtown New York, specifically an Italian-American area, Roman Catholic, that's who I am. And a part of what I know is there's a decency to people who tried to make a living in the kind of world that was around us and also the Skid Row area of the Bowery. It impressed me. I, you know, I selected that quote because Dolores and I have spoken about a lot of what we've learned about Italian-Americans, about the history of a lot of our ancestors that emigrated over here is they were in these kind of neighborhoods where they had to just survive They had to do whatever they had to do. And you'll hear this stuff through our guests and through some of the clips we're going to play. Specifically, some of the stuff you'll hear 
from our relatives, and that's just the way it was, and that's what it's going to be going to come out through the show. So with that, let's just jump right into the main segment now, and then Dolores and I can get into talking a little bit about what you can expect on the show. All right, so now it's time for the main segment of the show, and again, today's an intro, so we're going to focus on what to expect, and the first question that we'll kind of answer for you is, what is the Italian American podcast? And from my perspective, this is going to be a forum where we can hope to teach you through our guests, primarily, about Italian American heritage, uh, traditions, stories. Uh, We'll talk to high-profile Italian Americans, but also everyday people that emigrated or, or have stories about how it was back then, so you can understand where you actually came from. And we hope to learn a ton along the journey too. Dolores, what, what do you think? Yeah, I think that the whole aspect, the storytelling aspect that we plan to have uh, be a big part of the podcast kind of totally touches on this. So the high profile Italian Americans, of course, really important and lots of fun. And they are regular people as well. And they're going to have these amazing stories. But the stories we're going to get from our listeners The stories we're going to get from our own family members, those are just going to be magical. I know it. And I know what's really exciting for me as somebody who's always loved stories and always loved to hear my family stories is the idea that by asking our listeners to send us recordings of them, you know, asking their Italian family members about where they came from, that it's going to facilitate this process of them learning about their ancestry and their past. And that is super, super exciting. Yes, it definitely is. And we're starting it really because Dolores and I are really super passionate about Italian American history. Dolores spent a couple of years of her life writing a memoir about growing up Italian American. I've done a ton of research on it Mm -hmm. and I've built a few podcasts prior to this. And what I've learned is that you need to build a podcast for yourself. In other words, you have to build something based on what you're passionate about and what you want to learn about. And when you do that, the listeners that share that passion with you are going to come onto the show and they're going to enjoy the show as much as us. And we're going to learn from you as a listener and you're kind of going to learn things through the show. So I think that's kind of my perspective, Dolores. What do you think? I agree. I mean, if there's one thing Italians and Italian Americans have, it's passion, a love of family and an interest in family and being around one another and knowing about one another. Actually, Anthony, I have a really short, really great story. So my boyfriend has a childhood friend who is, you know, what we Italian Americans call an American, you know, (laughs) and my boyfriend's Sicilian. And uh, growing up, he says that his friend always used to say to him that his greatest regret is not being born Italian. Wow. (laughs) I love that. Because that's how great it is to be Italian and Italian-American and to grow up in an Italian family. There's nothing else like it. The good and the bad and the ugly, right? That's exactly right. And that's (laughs) that's pretty much what we're going to cover in this episode. And when we kind of let you know what you can expect, just to give you a little idea of some of the guests that we have in store, like I mentioned before, we we have already got Mary Tedesco interviewed, and that's published. You can listen to it as episode two. However, she's agreed to come on a couple more times and do some more stuff. She's really amazing. And Dolores just mentioned Sicily. Our episode after that's going to be with John Kehi, who authored five travel narrative books throughout Italy, but mainly focusing on Sicily. And we're going to have an episode where he kind of takes us through Sicily, through his own adventures and explains things to us. And we've got other ones, too. And and we're going to the Italian American Museum. We're going to broadcast from there. So we've got a ton of exciting stuff. We're, We're glad that you're coming along on the journey. You can always go to uh, ItalianAmericanPodcast.com. You can sign up for the newsletter there, and we'll email you these episodes as they come out, and we're thrilled about that. Can they follow us on um, Facebook and Twitter, Anthony? Absolutely. Facebook page, Italian American Podcast, and also uh, Twitter, we are at ItalAmerican. That's I-T-A-L American. So be sure to connect with us on Twitter. Hook up with us on the socials and tell us what you want to hear. You That's know, right. Facebook us, Twitter, tell us what guests you want us to get. Shoot for the stars. We've already been shooting for the stars yep. and we've had success. So mm-hmm. we're not afraid to do that. So with that, we're going to do now is transition into the Italian American story segment to close out this first episode. And this is the, the special segment where you're going to hear stories from some of our relatives and hopefully eventually some of yours. 
All right, so this is the part of the show where we're going to try to bring you back to your family gatherings, your conversations, you know, around the pasta, around the gravy, <laughs> if you want to call it gravy. Or sauce. Yeah, or sauce. <laughs> and, and, <Write> tr- <laughs> and try to, uh, to play a recording. So what you're going to hear in today's clip is you're going to hear my grandma. Her first language is Italian. And she tells a story when she recently went back to visit Italy with a bunch of American friends and she had a run in the bathroom with an Italian woman who was just kind of going off on them in Italian because she didn't realize that my grandmother or anyone in the group spoke Italian. So it's funny. So <laughs> let's listen to this and then uh, we'll come back in a minute and close out the show. When I went to Italy, we had to go to the bathroom. We had just gotten off the bus. And uh, we all run in, you know, everybody and this woman in attendant. We were asking her to give us the toilet paper. Signora, give us the paper. She got so mad she didn't want to give us the toilet paper. She was looking for the money. We all had our own toilet paper in our pocketbook. She says, Gista Medigana, then an air corn. These Americans have corns. Want to use the old gabinet and no bona baya. They want to use the toilet and they don't want to pay. She said it once. She said it twice. She said it three times. Finally, I said to her, Signora, e corni tiene do. What does that mean? In other words, you have the horns because we want the toilet paper and you don't want to give it to us. So we all opened up our pocketbook. We took out our own toilet paper, and she stood there like that. Kisti Mirigan, then in a corn. One use a gabinet. The gabinet is the toilet. Oh, okay. And they don't want to pay. She's looking for the money. Yeah. She wouldn't give us the toilet paper. <laughs> and when I answered her, she was like, oh, my God, she was shocked. Oh, why, because you spoke that Italian? That somebody in the group spoke Italian. All right, believe it or not, that's just a short sample of what we have for this story segment. I've got plenty more from Grandma. Dolores, I'm sure, is going to come up with plenty of them, and we'll have others. I did a lot of that, Anthony, for the memoir that I wrote. So I actually have a lot of archive stuff because I spent a lot of time recording not just my mother, but, you know, my aunts and our our friends who are, of course, family. So it's pretty exciting. I'll get some new stuff, too, though. That's awesome. We're going to have a lot of stuff on there. And if you want to go to ItalianAmericanPodcast.com on the right side of the website, there's a button that says tell your story. Just click it. You can actually just record yourself, hit the button and sends it to me and Dolores and we can get some of them on the show. So we're excited about that. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this short intro episode of the Italian American podcast. Our next episode, as I said, is already live and you can hear us interview Mary Tedesco, PBS host of the Genealogy Roadshow and founder of the company Origins Italy. She actually goes to Italy for people and finds their ancestors. Yeah. Hands down, one of the coolest companies I've ever yeah. come across. She gets to go to Italy and help people reconnect with their ancestors and their past. Not to mention, she's amazing just as like a human being. She was terrific. She was so cool. She was yeah. so down to earth. She Definitely. did this on a whim. She was going to Italy the next day. She recorded mm-hmm. with us. She gave three very specific steps for starting your genealogy research for your Italian ancestors and you just go to iTunes, search for Italian American Podcast. It's there. And if you could leave us a rating or review, that would get us off to a great start on the show. We're just excited about it. We're excited. We're going to keep this thing going. And uh, we just look forward to kind of sharing the journey with you. And we hope that you'll come along with us. That's Emile. I want to share an amazing experience I had with Tar Hill Construction Group when I needed to install a new roof on my home. Let me tell you, they are truly a cut above the rest. Tar Hill Construction Group is an award-winning residential and commercial roofing and exteriors contractor focusing on roofing, siding, gutters, and solar solutions. Proudly serving Baltimore, Hartford, and Cecil Counties, they make it their priority 
to make a positive impact in the communities they serve first while providing exceptional services in roofing and exteriors. From start to finish, Tar Heel Construction Group proved to be a reputable and dependable contracted solution. Their quality installations and good communication kept me informed and reassured throughout the entire process. It's no wonder they have been voted Harford's Best Roofing Contractor and Best Home Improvement Contractor for three years running. But here's what really impressed me. Tar Heel Construction Group's commitment to continued service and registered warranties. They stand behind their work, ensuring that I have peace of mind for years to come. What's even more remarkable is their dedication to giving back to the community. They aggressively support and uplift the neighborhoods they serve, making a positive difference in people's lives. I feel incredibly grateful and humbled to have chosen Tar Heel Construction Group for my roof. They have earned my trust and respect for being the only contractor to be voted Harford's best roofing contractor and Baltimore's best roofing contractor in the same year. So if you're looking for top-notch roofing and exterior solutions, look no further than Tar Heel Construction Group. Visit their website at tarheelconstructiongroup.com or give them a call at 410-638-7021. Again, that's 410-638-7021. Experience the excellence and community impact for yourself. Tar Heel Construction Group, building excellence one roof at a time. 